Up until now, we've focused on the properties of a single wave. But what happens when two waves meet? They interfere with each other, meaning they combine. When two waves combine, the result depends on whether they are in phase or out of phase. Waves are in phase when amplitudes have the same sign. When two in phase waves come together, they form a wave that is larger in amplitude. That's because the amplitudes get added together. We call this constructive interference. Before we continue, let's review. Which wave has the highest amplitude and the shortest wavelength? Amplitude is about the height of the wave, maximum or minimum, and wavelength is the space between waves. These two waves have the same large amplitude, but this one has the shortest wavelength. Now that we've reviewed, let's look at an example of constructive interference. Hearing aids use constructive interference to amplify noises that a person with a hearing disability might otherwise not be able to hear. They use technology to generate sound waves that precisely match the sound waves entering the ear, which increases the amplitude of the waves. This is how sounds are made to be louder so that people can hear them. Let's imagine that we have this wave and we combine it in phase with another identical wave. Which of the following graphs accurately represents the result of their constructive interference? That's right. When two in-phase waves combine, they make one wave that is larger in amplitude. If we look at this location on each wave, each of them has an amplitude of plus one at this point. We can add them. One plus one equals two. The amplitudes of the waves at each location add together to make the new larger wave. Now that we've talked about in-phase waves and constructive interference, let's talk about out-of-phase waves and destructive interference. Out-of-phase interference is when the waves that combine have opposite amplitudes from each other. Instead of combining to make a single wave with a larger amplitude, out-of-phase waves cancel out. We call this destructive interference. Noise-canceling headphones use technology that uses destructive interference to cancel out outside noise. These headphones measure the noise reaching them using an external microphone, then they produce a wave that is exactly the same but with opposite amplitudes to the sound wave coming in. These waves cancel each other out, so you don't hear anything from the outside. Consider this one-dimensional wave. What will the opposite amplitude wave look like? The opposite amplitude wave is the same shape and wavelength, but its amplitude is the opposite. For example, the amplitude is plus one here on the first wave. On the other wave, the same spot has an amplitude of minus one. Now, which of these wave diagrams represents the result of the combining of these two out-of-phase waves? Since this location on the first wave has an amplitude of plus one and the second wave has an amplitude of minus one at that location, they sum to zero. Doing this at all the locations also leads to canceling and zero amplitude. Let's look at two more examples using waves that are a little more complicated. Even though they're more complicated, the principles are still the same. How do you think these waves will interact with each other when they come together? Notice that these waves are completely out of phase. Since the wave on the left has its first peak as plus one and its second peak as minus one, and the wave on the right has its first peak as minus one and its second piece as plus one, these waves are completely out of phase and will cancel out. For the first peak on each wave, one plus negative one equals zero. For the second peak, negative one plus one also equals zero. This is another example of destructive interference. Now, let's look at one more example. Here we have two identical waves. How do you think they will interact with each other? Right, these waves have the same amplitude at each location, so they are completely in phase. These waves will combine to make one wave that's larger in amplitude. Specifically, the amplitude will be double of the individual waves, since one plus one equals two for the first peak, and negative one plus negative one equals negative two for the second peak. While wave interference can be difficult to understand, using straightforward addition can make it much easier. Remember that waves that peak above the axis have a positive amplitude, while waves that peak below the axis have a negative amplitude. When waves combine, always add the peaks together to determine the new amplitude of the wave.